Well, what the ruddy hell is going on with Anthony Joshua, the former unified heavyweight champion of the world, the once biggest draw in boxing and commercial superstar? He seems to be now in no man's land. But why is this, we must ask? Why has the Wilder fight gone quiet? Why is Eddie Hearn struggling to deliver? And with his next move so crucial, who can he fight to revive his profile that satisfies the fans and gets him one step closer to world titles again? It's not as simple as you may think, but let's have a little look case to wrap it. Well in a way it's been a funny old year for AJ. His return to the ring against Franklin was a somewhat underwhelming affair. A solid boxing display but the fireworks he produced in yesteryear were expected and never came. It was clear the rebuild with Derek James required more time so another touch up in August was needed and Dillian White found himself in the hot seat. A blinding choice in my opinion. A spicy fight first time round. Both men still kept hold of that bad blood and with Dillian looking very flat when he fought Franklin it seemed plausible for AJ to get the job done in style, gaining himself that much needed confidence. But <laughs> Dilly Willy went and fucked it all up, didn't he? Yeah, apparently he went and met Royd Cropper. He withdrew some funds from Royd's TSB, thought it would help him becoming a boxing great. Yeah, Royd fucking Mayweather, double liberty. I was not looking forward to that, Dilly, and your boner. Friggin' hell. But anyway, in came Hellanius to save the day. And after a relatively tentative few rounds, AJ produced a highlight reel knockout reminiscent of old. We all said, yeah, well, not too shabby, Joshy boy. Took your time, but well done. And thank you, Hellanius, for saving the day. You're a top bloke, you are. And then he went and failed a test as well. Bloody hell, what's going on? He failed a test for something called, uh, Clom... Clomophene. And I've never heard of it, fuck knows. Anyway, straight away after the Hellanius knockout, the Wilder fight was tipped to be next. Eddie said it was near enough a done deal, nothing would get in the way of it, fully locked and loaded for December in Saudi. And our nipples were fully erect. Oh yes, this was the barnstormer we'd been deprived of for many years, and with Fury Usyk in the pipeline, this would cement who really was number three in the world, setting them up for the undisputed winner, and a chance for both men to once again be world champions. But as for uh, Anthony Joshua, taking on Deontay Wilder. Mm -hmm. It ain't happening. Eddie Hearn telling us we were offered a deal. We accepted, but it fell through. It's not my fault. Ah, oh dear. It's pretty soul-destroying being a boxing fan sometimes, isn't it? So instead of news about Joshua Wilder in Saudi, we get news about Joshua in fucking darkness. Terrific. But for crying out loud, why can't they get this fight on? It makes no sense to me, bruv. First of all, Wilder and Joshua are the biggest names in heavyweight boxing outside of Fury and Usyk. Both men lost twice to the two champs. They've had their comeback fights, and now they simply need each other to put themselves back in the hot seat for a world title challenge after the undisputed goes ahead. Not forgetting it's also the biggest money fight available for both. Yes, well, okay, and Garner has now put himself in that money category as well before you say it, but that's happened all of a sudden, ain't it? And anyway, we'll come back to that in a minute. So why has this beauty been such a difficulty to get on? Now, could it be the poor relationships that Eddie has made with Team Wilder? And every other fucker for that note. But regardless, it's no secret that him and Shirley Winkle had plenty of dramas back in 2018. And is that animosity still lurking below the surface? Or is the Saudi the outfit skills challenge who Eddie works with, simply unable to provide the mega money fights now that the double excellent turkey is running the show. Well, to be honest, I've got to say it, I find it very hard to believe that the problems are on the Saudi end, because as we know, the Saudis are trying to become a mega tourist attraction, and surely an AJ Wilder fight is perfect for business, whether it's done through skills challenge or turkey. Not to mention after the Fury and Ghana event that must have cost well into the hundreds of millions in purses and infrastructure, etc., it's obvious the money is there to make this fight happen. Something doesn't sit right about this being the issue for me. So then does it boil down to the most problematic situation? That one of these fighters, or one of the fighters outfit, doesn't want the fight. There are mixed opinions on who ducked who a few years back, but with Wilder turning down 120 million to fight AJ twice, and previous to this Shirley Winkle stopping Wilder from fighting Klitschko, it does pose the question of Deontay's intentions around that time. However, to his credit, he did try a more delicate approach to make this fight recently. So Anthony, you hearing it from my mouth, hey, I'm here, I'm ready, I'm ready to go. You know, from the horse's mouth himself. Let's, let's make this the best time of our lives. This would be a, 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 a major disaster if we would never be able to get in the ring. Without a stamp, 
down in history, bro. I believe you're ready. I hope you're ready. I think you're ready. Let's make this happen, bro. Yeah, very nice. He's tried the old soft, respectful approach. You don't see that very often. He's giving it the old Barry White smooth tone, saying, come on, Joshua, me old baby. Let's make some geography, bruv. Caress each other's faces with our gorgeous little fists. Try and knock each other fucking spark out. I like it. Well done, Deontay. But yes, unfortunately, it hasn't produced the desired effect. In fact, it produced fuck all. Anyway, listen, now I'm not saying either man is ducking because obviously we simply don't know. But people will ask the question in reverse now and they'll ask it to AJ and Eddie. Do they actually want this fight? Because you can't beat about the hairy bush. If Joshua loses to Wilder, it's all over. There's nowhere to go after that and dreams of reclaiming world titles are completely gone. However, this is actually true of any man he fights next. So with the Wilder fight taking a great big shit, who does he fight? Well, let's have a look. But just before we get into that, let me borrow you for a few seconds to talk about a boxing fan's new best friend. Yes, it's Boxing Showtimes, the ultimate app for passionate fans. This beauty simply offers it all from a detailed schedule to comprehensive information on every event, along with the tale of the tapes, fight times, ticket sources, up-to-date undercard lineups, and a boatload of technical overviews on each of your favourite fighters. Did I forget to mention it provides you with all the hot news stories bubbling up in the boxing world? Yes, I fucking did. Silly me, but yes it does. It's ruddy brilliant. So use my promo code below for access to all the ad-free premium features, everything a boxing fan could ever need. Her bosh, now back to the vid. Yes, so if not Wilder, the recently named contenders in the media for AJ to fight next are as follows. We've got Big Bang Zilly Zhang, Hergovic, Wallin, Caboyel, and Garnu now in the mix. And who could forget Manuel Bloody Char? Yeah. Anthony Pushua. So let's nip it in the bud. Manuel Char's name's been mentioned, but no. Just please fucking no. Wallin is a decent fight, but a risky one with barely any financial reward. The same goes for Caballel, even less risk to be honest. However, this is probably the easiest tick over fight, which AJ and Eddie may see as a good option. And then there's Hergovic. Well, he hasn't looked great in his past few performances, but it's still a tough fight. Again, not amazing financially though. Could it sell out more than the O2? Probably not. But all in all, it's just not a nipple erector, is it? However, what is a nipple erector? He's Big Bang, Zilly Zhang. The heavy hitting unit coming off two superb wins against the juggernaut. He matches AJ's knockout power. It's a don't blink someone's getting knocked double spark out in a minute. Look fucking lively kind of fight in it. Yes, maybe it sells out more than the O2. Possibly it's another debatable one really, but with Zhang's profile skyrocketing after the Joyce fights, it does have the option to be staged in China for a decent bit of bunts. Oh yes, because remarkably around 60 million from his homeland tuned in to watch his destruction of the juggernaut. But... Yeah, realistically, if AJ is still kinda rebuilding, is he gonna go into Zhang's backyard? Probably not. And not only that, it comes back to Eddie's relationship with other promoters. Zhang, of course, being a part of Frank Warren's Queensbury. Them two enjoy being around each other like a turkey enjoys being around Bernard fucking Matthews. So yes, maybe if George Warren does all the negotiating, it might get over the line, but in a nutshell, it's gonna be a difficult one to make, as history has told us. It's a bit of a shame, really. But then we're left with and Garnu. Well, after his performance against Fury, he's now a very big draw in the boxing world. And by the sounds of things, Eddie's all over it like a fly on shit. Oh yes, bring it on, he said. He knocked on the darkroom door after the Fury fight. He said, AJ, turn on the light. You'll never guess what's happened, bruv. And Garnu nearly beat Fury. You're fucking joking, he said. Nah, straight up, bruv, bloody hell. And yes, the dollar signs are in Edward's eyes. Because outside of the Wilder fight, it is, of course, the most financially lucrative. And dare I say it, it's potentially the easiest fight for AJ based on the boxing experience of Zhang, Hergovic, Wallin and Caballel and it gives him bragging rights if he were to do what Fury couldn't knock him spark out. So of course it makes the most sense to Edward. In my pointless opinion though I'd say there's a lot more credibility to gain facing Zhang, Hergovic or Wallin because they're well schooled operators. But ultimately boxing's a business so the dollar signs will always trump status. We all know that. And on top of all this Nganu's now had a taste of the big buck so he'll be bang up for the fight himself Maybe don't be surprised to see this taking place on Saudi territory double soon because it's probably the best option in Eddie's eyes. But yes, whatever way you look at it now, the Wilder fight's fallen flat. AJ is in a bit of no man's land, not to mention being in the last chance saloon no matter who he faces. Caballel brings nothing whatsoever other than a warm-up and he'll just get criticism for this fight anyway. Zhang is a seriously tough night, but the Eddie and Frank Warren dynamic makes this one unlikely. Hergovic and Wallin are tough fights with no real gain and the 
think Garnu fight is what it is. Yes, Francis is a decent boxer, miles better than I thought, but I've got to keep the same energy I did for Fury and say AJ should be fighting an experienced top 10 boxer and not a boxer who's been put in the top 10 just because Maurizio Suleiman wants him there to get his percentage. However, having said all that, you can bet your bum out I certainly will be watching. Bosh. Anyway, there we go. I personally hope Zang gets the nod somehow because that's a sexy dust up, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Caballero as a tick over or in Ghana for a blockbuster in Saudi. Let me know who you think he fights next and don't forget to have a little listen to Free Bellens talking waffle on the proper pod. Toodle pit for now, Bosh.